Today, we're gonna revamp Grand Theft Auto 4. And I'll be showing you how. We'll be achieving things like toggleable first person, an overhauled combat balance with tweaks on damage, range, and accuracy, as well as a completely revamped world with things such as fine-tuned diversity, fixed traffic, and more. Let's do this. First off, we're gonna do gameplay. The Zilliqa Trainer is just crazy. It's insane. It's got so many options in it. You've got the basic bitch set like God Mode, Never Wanted, Spawning Weapons, all that, and then you got the swag Cat Smackaroo certified badass options. The ones I care about. I can become a freak in the streets. I'm a freak in the streets, yo! Yo, I'm a freak, man. You don't wanna fuck with me, yo. You don't wanna fuck with me. You don't wanna fuck with me, yo. Yeah, but there's also some simple things, like being able to move with a sniper, which I've legit got no clue why that wasn't a thing. I mean, it was in GTA San Andreas. But anyway, it sounds small, and it kind of is, so let's go ahead and make a big change. Let's go over that badass fist piss and gameplay. The Zolica Trainer features a pretty sophisticated and configurable first person mode, so what I've done is created three hotkeys. They're all tied to the same button, so they trigger on and off at the same time. The first one is to actually enable first person. The second one is to trigger this preset for Nico. The third and final one simply makes it so your character rotates when you move your camera. This creates for more precise movement, which I prefer but it also avoids you looking into your void of a neck. Now there's a lot of minor annoyances in this game, like when you're trying to aim down a wall from the left side, it's pretty tricky to work with, so I made another hotkey to trigger that left aim view. Another annoyance with the game is how certain weapons have firing delays, inconsistent fire rates, and simply improper animations. So now I'm using improved animations pack, which fixes all of these in a pretty interesting way. It basically removes the reliance of a fire rate stat in the game files, so now guns are fully reliant on their animation, which are also of course improved. However, due to the fire rates being much more consistent, you'll be losing ammunition a lot faster. And that's an even bigger worry with Responsive Plus, which has many, many weapon changes and tweaks, like reducing your max ammo and increasing ammo prices. This means you have to be careful with both your ammunition and money. It also adjusts damage. This alongside the proper firing rates of improved animations pack really makes enemies such as the FIB or Noose incredibly scary. You can die in seconds. It's nuts, possibly bolts, and that's how it should be. The game is dark, gritty, and dangerous, and even more so with potential grim. This mod is one of my all-time favorites. It revamps gang life and activity in a variety of ways. Due to spawn changes and attitude changes, gangs will begin harassing each other, which can result in gunfights, and whichever side wins can go into an absolute frenzy, attacking other gang members, police, and even you if they don't like you. And you'll have to keep note during the story as relationships between you and the gangs change depending on the events. In the vanilla game, the world is, well I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty shit in terms of diversity, at least with the vehicle traffic. Well, <laughs> we're gonna fix that. Let's start with Simple Traffic Loader. The simple in that title doesn't mean jack shit because the science behind it all is actually pretty complex. In pretty much every GTA game, there's a system for the traffic. There's set traffic inside of certain files, so some vehicles will only spawn in specific locations, but another thing is, vehicles that are in your game's memory will also begin to spawn. For example, the Sultan Arrest in the vanilla game never spawns a traffic, however if you begin driving one, you'll start seeing them in tons of areas. This mod refreshes that memory every now and then with whatever you pull up into this TXD file, resulting in traffic being much more diverse. But since the certain files I mentioned before still exist, each location will still feel special in terms of that traffic. <sighs> okay, so Responsive Plus and Potential Gum did as we went over before, but they also adjust the pedestrians and how they act, making it all much more diverse and realistic, specifically with traffic densities. There's also restored pedestrians, and even literal fixes, like patching improperly named groups. And that's it for the world, just these few mods overhaul the game in such a fantastic, faithful way, you just gotta love it. And if you don't, well, fuck you. Have you ever wanted to play Insurance Fraud from Saints Row in GTA? Well, now you can. Spread around all across the map are these side activities, these are all repeatable and extremely refreshing. And if you don't know, for Insurance Fraud, you press a button to begin ragdolling, at which point gravity is lowered and you are given increased control. Each bit of damage you receive increases the amount of cash slash points you get. There's three levels, bronze, silver, and gold. And with the great phases this game has, it's a no-brainer that this mode is just so epic. 
and there's of course way more activities, like Demolition Derby, where you smash into other vehicles and gotta be the last car driving to win. There's also a nice balance to it all, since you have a 15 second timer to hit other vehicles, or else you're disqualified. There's also this one Landstalker who just wins every fucking time! Fuck that guy. For real. One of my new favorites is Bomb Run. The objective is to simply stay at a high enough speed for you to not enter into this red zone. And if you're in that red zone for too long, then... Oh no. Oh no! There, there's tons and tons more in this mod, like seriously, this mod alone adds hours and hours of content to enjoy. It's also been improved a ton just by fan suggestions. Like some of my own ideas made it in, one of them being survival. Here you fight endless waves of enemies, and in between said waves you can purchase items, like weapons, but even increase your maximum health and armor. Many locations were thought of for this, but in the end, Pier 45 was the decision and I think it works well. So if you have some ideas, feel free to post them in the form post in the description. And oh, there's another thing with this mod. It has multiplayer support. Shoot up, and then we're gonna, we're gonna. Oh, no, no. I fucking died the second it started. The sync is actually pretty good. It's truly a unique experience. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go full speed. Alright, you know what? Fuck this one. GTA 4 looks pretty dated. Well, that's a lie. It actually looks pretty good in my opinion, but there's definitely some things that look questionable. One of the main complaints for the game is the lack of color, contrast, and overall feeling. However, they probably don't know the display tab exists in the pause menu. This gives you control over the brightness, contrast, and even saturation. You could completely change the game to some noir crime fighting simulator. It's pretty sick, but anyway, I use a pretty specific setup. The mod I mentioned before, Responsive Plus, also comes with some visual improvements. So let's go ahead and compare it to vanilla. Here's some higher view distance, kind of, and here's better, more dense trees, and here's a slight contrast difference. Yeah, it's not really any major changes, but I use this and then I adjust the display settings. It results in some pretty nice shadows and color. Now let's switch over to the nighttime. Go ahead and just look in that distance. Uh, take a big gander at these absolutely beautiful LOD effects. It makes the city feel so much more alive. It's such a simple but big change. My issue with the game myself is the HUD. Like look at the radio station icons right here. They just, they just look like shit. So I got an HD version of those. There's also a version of this that colors the icons, I'll have both linked in the description. And that's all I've got today. If you want to get your directory set up with all these mods, you'll have to downgrade first, but I've got an interesting fact, strat, and glitch about that. If you've ever seen my ultimate guide for this game, we have to drag and drop files, and run a dot bat file, and just fuck all that bullshit, cause now we've got this swag, epic ass downgrader. HOLY SHIT 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 this is a pretty sleek design boy. It's created by Clonk Andre and it has tons of information and helps you more easily downgrade your game to 1070 or 1080. It's got extra stuff onto it though, like the radio downgrader. And you can pick which mods you want in your game, containing explanations for each mod. Even my ultimate guide didn't go over that one. It also features a guide for save downgrading and gives an option to create a backup of your game. After that's all done, I'll have a lengthy installation order of exactly what I've done to achieve my game setup. Now, good luck, and uh, uh bye. <laughs>